just to stand with us. If you're at home and you'd like to stand, you can feel free to do that as well. Just join with us as we uh, worship the Lord tonight.
we're excited that you're here with us. Sorry, I had to take care of the children. Um, we're excited that you have decided to come and join us today. Oh, it is not. We are excited that, excited that you've come to join us today. We're excited that God is joining us today and that we can be here together. And so if this is your first time with us, Maybe this is your first time on Facebook with us or on YouTube. We just want to say thanks for being here with us. Thanks for coming. If you want to get in touch with us, you can't fill out a physical welcome card like you do here in the church, but you can get a hold of us, and we would love to know that you're with us today. Yeah, uh, you can comment. You can uh, send us an email at info at the orchards .church, uh, or you can uh, talk to us personally, and uh, we'd love that opportunity to get to know you a little better. We do want to uh, let you know that my name is Todd, and this is Angela, and uh, we pastor here at the Orchards Church. You can always uh, check us out on all the social media um, things that we have, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, as well as our website, theorchards.church. And the biggest thing that we would love for you to, to just connect with us, and really for yourself on, is that Bible app. And if you go uh, download the Bible app, it's free. Um, then you can have, there's devotionals there that are free. There are, um, there's a, a scripture, um, all the scripture that you need, I guess. The whole Bible is there, and that's for free. And then on there, if you go to the lower right-hand corner, I think, yeah, lower right-hand corner, and um, then you go to the more, and then go to the events, you can get all of the information about uh, today's spe uh, specific service. Yeah, I'm tongue-tied today. And uh, you can just check all of that out right there. And uh, we're going to uh, just invite the kids to join us. The one thing that we're going to ask the kids is if you would help us not step by not stepping on that cord. Um, that would be beneficial to those who are listening online. And so we're just going to ask you to stand with us. We're going to sing together. And uh, as we talk this whole day about our dream to plant seeds of faith. And so if you would do that, and you can do that at home too, here we go. Great job. You can all have a seat. 
If you aren't here live, you don't get to see all the little yeah. rascals <laughs> running around jumping, and yeah. singing and yeah. jumping and yeah. shouting. And it's so exciting to be able to uh, just see kids honor the Lord and worship the Lord. We are uh, going to get into our message series uh, for tonight. We're in the second week of our series, We Have a Dream. And we're going to present to you just a little video, and we hope that it conveys the message that it's meant to. Here we go. Christ followers 
can get really complicated and really um, just over analyzed and over thought out and all of those things. Because our big idea for today is we have a dream to plant. And planting seeds of faith, planting the word of God, sharing Jesus with others, this should be pretty simple. It's not a hard process. It's not, it's not, it, it, it is what it is, right? God gave us one great commission. And in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's it. Go, make disciples, baptize. That's the extent of the Great Commission. Then we as humans get involved, right? And we think, make disciples, hmm, well, first we have to go back to the original Greek and the original Hebrew and figure out what exactly Matthew was trying to say with those exact words. What did he mean by go? How do we go? Where do we go? What do we go and do? All of those things. Then next we consider, okay, now what's the context of how he was presenting this? Who was he writing this to? Then we'll have to consider whether Matthew uh, was on one side of the theological spectrum or was he on the other side of the theological spectrum. What did he mean by all? That's what we do. We take everything and just overcomplicate it. And while all of these studies are good, they're good things, they're good things to study, Jesus just tells us, go and tell. Go and tell somebody. We can get all caught up in the, the Greek and the Hebrew and the Latin and all of these other things that we never actually go and tell. And that was never God's design for us. So Jesus told a really simple parable about planting seeds. And it's found in Mark chapter 4. If you want to go there with me, you can take that Bible that's in front of you, uh, or you can uh, use that version app, that Bible app. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 4, verse 3. And it says this. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. Pretty simple. The interpretation of that verse is found in verse 14. So let's go to verse 14. And it says, the farmer plants seeds by taking God's word to others. Not too complicated. Not too hard. That's it. That's how Jesus instructed the disciples and us to plant seeds. Take God's word to others. The whole rest of the parable, it talks about the seed, how the seed is the people, and how they'll receive it. But it it really isn't the sower's concern. The reality is the sower sows. That's the job. Earth-shattering revelation from the Orchard's Church today. Planters plant. That's what they do. I know as a Christ follower, we can, we can get terrified about this. We can think... Oh man, what if the person on the other side of the conversation doesn't accept what I have to say? What if, what if they take it in the wrong context? What if, what if I become a la laughing stock? What if, what if they get mad at me? What if they get offended with me? What if they don't like me anymore? What if, what if I break the relationship? What, 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 how, what? And we just overcomplicate it. Maybe those are just some of the personal fears that you and I have about sharing our faith. But really, it's just overcomplicating what God's called us to do. You see, we fear, we dread, we question, 
we worry. And we end up like those people on those memes that you see, you had one job. You had one job. It's kind of like this. Please slow drive me. Please slow drive me? Like, what? I asked the church this morning, I was like, what does this mean? And one of the one of the students, one of the seniors in high school, he goes, means please slow me uh, treat, please slow, slow driving. driving. Like that, that's exactly what it means. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I know what it reads. But that's what we do. We have one job, and that's to share the good news of Jesus with the people around us. We're supposed to plant seeds of faith. But we overcomplicate it, and we often end up not doing it because we've overcomplicated it in our heads. So how do we fulfill this dream? How can we move past that overcomplication? And so today, we're going to boil these sewing principles down to two parts. That's it. Two parts to understand about how we can plant seeds of faith. Two parts of fulfilling that idea that we have a dream to plant. Yeah, so part one is pretty easy. It's God's part. So if there's two parts to it, the one part is God's part. I bet you can guess the other part is our part. But right now, God's part. You see this one job that God gave us to do, this one great commission that he asked us to do, it's just like anything else that God asks us to do. He never meant for us to have to do it by ourselves. He never said, all right, there you go, good luck. No, he would never do that. He doesn't do that. He never meant for you to have to plant these seeds all by yourself. We have all this stuff here today. We have the, the pot and the soil and the seeds. We couldn't find real seeds because it's a really bad time of year to try to look for all this jazz. That's why I should I know, I should <laughs> um, But we did want to give out sunflower seeds to everybody as a memory. A, a number, a memory? That's not a word. As a memory of this service. So... These are better than seeds anyway. So there you go, similar seeds for all. Um, and so we have all of this stuff here. We have all of the things. And the, and the thing with, with God is that he provides the seeds. He provides the soil. He provides the nutrients in the soil. He even provides somebody to water that soil if need be, if, if it's if it's a longer process, he'll, he'll have somebody come and help you do this job. God took care of everything, all of the stuff, all of the accoutrements that you need to plant a seed. God did that for you. All you have to do is plant the seed. Now, <sighs> he didn't mean for you to have to do any of this by yourself. He did all of the heavy lifting. So let's break this down just a little bit. Let's talk about exactly what God did provide for us. God provided the seed. And like it said in the parable, the seed is the word of God. The soil is the people. The seed is the word of God. Now, this doesn't mean that God expects you as a Christ follower to have the entire word of God, all 66 books, and shove them down someone's throat as Exciting as that would be, that would <laughs> not be very fun for them. It also doesn't mean that he requires you to memorize that entire book so that you will be ready if someone asks you a question and, and when you're talking to your neighbor about Jesus and he's going to listen to Lamentations whether he likes it or not and that's just going to be how it is. No. The word of God that he's talking about in the parable, the word of God that he's talking about in that great commission is the words of God, the ideas, the thoughts, his fruit, his love, his joy, his peace, his hope, and the good news of what Christ did for that soil, <laughs> for that person on the cross. That's the good news of God. That's the seeds that we have to plant. Not some great theological treatise, not some crazy ideas, just the simple gospel. Taking this a step further, I found this picture of a seed, and I, I thought it was really cool, because inside every seed is everything that it needs to grow. 
it has the embryo, it has the, the food that it needs at first, it has the coating that helps it stay safe. Everything that it needs is all packed in there. All the resources, all the know-how, everything that it needs to produce a plant is already in that seed. God made it the same way for his word. Everything that we need, everything that he's asking us to plant is self-sufficient and ready to go. We don't have to analyze and break it down and complicate it or anything like that. Isaiah 55 11 says it this way. In the same way, with my word, I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. We used to say in the church, it won't return void. When we preach the gospel to no matter where it falls, it will not return void. It's self-sufficient. You don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to overanalyze it. Just sow the seed. <laughs> That's all we're asking. And what about the soil? The, the, the parable kind of describes different kinds of soil that the seed could fall on. The hard soil and the, the weeds and the rocks and all of the different places that it could fall. But again, it's not the sower's responsibility. Each person, each individual is responsible for how they receive the word of God. God says in his word that he is going to reveal himself. He's given everyone a measure of faith. And he reveals himself through nature. He reveals himself through us planting that seed. He does the work of making himself known to that person and bringing them to a relationship with him. And then the watering. I kind of talked about it a little bit, that some, sometimes you have to water that plant. This is a really amazing part of this process because God provides the people to help you with the planting of the seed. That's other people in your church. That's other people in God's church, in the kingdom of God universal. You may never see what happens when you plant a seed. You may never see it grow. You may never see it germinate. You may never see it take root. You may never see what happens. Maybe that person that you planted that seed in goes away and you never see them again. But God knows. God knows that seed has been planted, and he takes care of that seed. And the next person that that, that that person that you've planted inside runs into, maybe the next person pours a little water onto it. Maybe they encourage them a little bit more. Maybe they give a little bit more to them. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, he says it this way, I planted the seeds in your heart, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. So many times I think we get nervous about what, what happens or how is that discipleship going to look like or what am I going to say next or what, uh, what's going on. Mm. God says plant the seed and let me take care of that. Let me provide the increase. Another really cool part of this God part is the Holy Spirit. Throughout all of the different Gospels, they give us this great commission, this one thing that we're supposed to do. We read it out of Matthew. Mark says it a little bit different. Luke says it a little bit different. John says it a little bit different. And then again in Acts, Luke kind of reiterates what he said. This great commission was given when Jesus ascended, right? Like after he raised from the dead, he ascended to the throne. And in that ascension, he gave kind of his his final plea, his final decree. This is the thing you have to do. And as he was doing that, Luke kind of recorded it in Acts 1.8, and it takes place at that same time. Luke says it this way, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people everywhere, you know, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. One job, one thing that we're supposed to do is to take his word everywhere, to be witnesses of the hope and the joy and the love and the plan that God has for each one of us. But again, no intention of having to do it on your own. 
What kind of a God would say, I'm giving you this gargantuan task of telling the entire world about me, and I'm not helping you? <laughs> that would be terrible. Who would do that? And God did it. He said, you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. That is the reason that God gave us the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you read just one chapter over from Acts 1 to Acts 2, you'll see that when they're in the upper room, they all received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues on that day. And that's why we as Pentecostals believe that this is still an experience that we can have today because this commission... <laughs> is still before us. We believe that the baptism is the power that we need to be able to witness and tell the world about Jesus. We still need the Holy Spirit's courage. We still need his wisdom. We still need his words coming out of us, working in us to have the courage to tell others about Jesus. And believe me, I've had some conversations with some of you we as a church have overcomplicated this baptism in the Holy Spirit thing, something fierce, really to a spectacular degree that has hurt people more than I think it helps sometimes. But really, we shouldn't. It's not complicated. It's simple. It's the power to go and tell. The point of this is <coughs> God's part is pretty big. In fact, it's the biggest part <laughs> of anything tonight. God does all of the hard part. God does all of the heavy lifting. God does all of the work. All we have to do is have a dream to plant. That's what he's called us to. Which is the second part. Part two is our part. Our part is really Really complicated. Are you ready for this? It's going to be intense. Okay, get this open. We take the seed and we plant it. That's it. That's what we do. Now I know it may be a little bit more complicated than that, but I would caution you that if you're trying to make it too hard, then you're you're trying too hard. We talked about the hard part for us last week, and that was cultivating those relationships, getting over that barrier, making sure that what we were doing was, was tilling the soil and getting, the, getting it ready, <coughs> bridging those gaps, crossing those, those lines that seem uh, too big to bear. But once we do that, once we go outside of our comfort zone and start doing what we know to do, then we can rely on God to do the hard part for us. When we go out of our way to provide food and clothing for homeless people or food and, 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 and things for someone who needs it in our area, then eventually they're going to say, why are you doing this? What is it about you that's different? And we're going to be able to say, because God loves you, and so do I. Boom. The seed is planted. When we give granola bars to first responders in our community and we, we, we work on giving the, the, the snacks to the, the firefighters, eventually, like what has happened to Todd, is they're going to say, why are you guys doing this? What is with that? Why do you want to help us? And we're going to be able to say, because God loves you and he wants to care for you and he wants to protect you. And we want to pray for you and encourage you. See plenty. When the lady I work with who is on polar opposite sides of me, <laughs> theologically and politically and, and all other manner of opposite of me, comes and says, why do you talk to me. You're a pastor and I'm completely opposite from you. I have the opportunity to say because God loves you and so do I. I have no idea if that seed will ever grow. I have no idea if it will ever take root. 
I have no idea if I'm going to even be able to see it happen. But I know that I have a dream to plant. And I know that God tells me in his word to do as much as I can and tell as many as I can and plant as much seed as I can so that some may come to know the hope that I have in Christ. I will say this as a little bit of a caveat. Sometimes it's our job to water. Sometimes God puts people in our path that, that another Christ follower has taken the time to plant seeds in. Can I encourage you to take this responsibility seriously? <laughs> Don't foul it up. <laughs> Be that good <laughs> next example of Christ. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know what's happening. So just go ahead and, and give a little give a little love, give a little encouragement. I found this graphic of a seed and it said, if you provide water and warmth to our seeds, the seed coat will absorb water and eventually crack and that's what's going to lead to the growth. And I just thought, yeah, that's, that's what we need to do as a church. That's, that's how we need to be. We need to provide a little water, a little warmth, a little love to those people who finally have come through the doors of the church because somebody invited them, somebody planted that seed, and it's not for us to go, oh, what are they doing here? <laughs> no. It's for us to come around them and to, to surround them and encourage them to grow. It's for us to support them in their <laughs> fledgling. Maybe it's rough around the edges. Maybe it doesn't look like we think it should. But it's our job to encourage that growth. I want to do my part in this whole process because I have a dream to plant. This may be really simple today, and I haven't told you anything that you've probably not heard a million times. But I'm not going to apologize for it because we have overcomplicated this issue for way too long. Go and tell. Plant, sow. It's so simple because God has done all the hard parts. We just have to plant the seed. We said last week that we were going to challenge you during this series to, to kind of think about the dream that God has given you for 2021. I would encourage you that planting needs to be a part of that dream. I dare say each of us could name some people, could write down some names of people that we know, that we could plant some seeds in. <laughs> people who, who God is kind of bringing to your mind, or who, who you just seem to be running into a lot lately, or, or, or seems to be, you know, crossing paths with you a lot. People who maybe you know aren't living like they used to, or maybe even making some pretty wrong choices. People you know who could use the hope that you have. The hope that is found in God. The hope that is found in His Son. Now I didn't say we have a dream to coerce and shame and guilt into the kingdom. I said we have a dream to plant. And our hope is over the next few weeks that God will give you these names and, and you'll be able to write them down and you'll be able to pray over them and you'll say, God, give me a creative way to cultivate a relationship with this person. Give me an open door to be able to plant that seed into that person. That God would be able to, to move and to, to work in that little list give you opportunities to plant this year. That planting seeds of faith would be part of the dream that God gives you for this coming year. Can you bow your heads and pray with me? Jesus, we thank you so much that you never meant for us to do this alone. That you wish that none would perish, but that all would come to know you. 
that every tribe, every tongue, like we said before, every person, what do they, whatever they look like, whatever they think, God can can come to know you. So Lord, right now, I just ask that you would start birthing dreams inside of us. Start birthing ideas inside of us. Inspire us with names that we can write down and that we can make a part of our prayers, make a part of our goals, Lord, not to shove things, not to coerce, not to shame, but God, to, just to plant, to love, to give a little warmth, to give a little light, to give a little water, and God, to encourage something beautiful to grow. Lord, you are the king of making beauty out of ashes. Lord, you're the king of making good come from bad. Lord, we ask that you would help us this year to see people with your eyes, to have courage, to be filled with your spirit, to have wisdom, to know when to say, what to say, how to say. God, that we would just be planters this year. In your name, God, I pray. Oh. 
Of his love. 
coordinator in essence. He's our superintendent. He's going to be with us uh, in that service. We're going to share uh, financial reports. God's doing an amazing thing here, and I'm just blown away. And uh, I know that you will be as well. Um, with all the things that we purchased, like our lights, um, today we have a new, uh, hopefully, a new element in our, our video um, or sound. Hopefully it makes it better. Um, if you want to comment and let us know, that would be amazing. Um, but like things, uh, like just a bunch of things like our, our um, picture of the, the orchard that is here in Lander, all of those things, and we're still financially way past where we were just even like three months ago. And so that's because of your faithfulness, and it allows us to tell more people about Jesus, um, whether it's around the world, through online, or through missions, and all those things. We just want to say thank you for your faithful giving, and you can always do that online or put that in our boxes. Let's pray, and then we'll let you go. Father, we just thank you for um, who you are. God, I thank you that you are our healer. God, I pray for those who are struggling even in this moment. God, I pray for those who are struggling with addiction, those who are struggling with, um, Lord, just fear and anxiety, Lord, stress. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling in their job. God, I pray that you give them wisdom, you give them discernment. God, I pray for uh, those who maybe um, are struggling with, uh, Lord, cancer or tumors or, um, or just uh, they need a healing in their body. God, I pray that you would do the work. God, I thank you that you say that you're the great physician. Lord, you are the great healer. Lord, you, you knit us together in our, our mother's womb so you know everything about us. And Lord, we ask that you would do that work in us. Lord, help us to seek you. Help us to put you first. God, be with us as we go our different ways. Lord, as we have our growth time together, God, I pray that you would um, help us to... Um, just hold each other accountable, Lord, and also to challenge each other in our walk with you. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us online. We're going to gather together for our growth time here in person. And then, uh, yeah, so hope to see you next week. God bless you.